This is intermittent fasting for serious weight loss. And I'm gonna give you my five best tips for how to maximize your weight loss results through intermittent fasting. These are things that I've seen people do wrong or things that just the research is showing increase the fat burning, the, you know, the speed at which you can get the results that you're looking for. And there are so many great reasons to intermittent fast that go way beyond weight loss. But I also get it. I initially got into fasting for weight loss. I know so many people are like, yeah, 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 it's for my health too. But really, initially, kind of the big draw is to shed a few pounds, to feel better in your body. And, and so I understand that. You know, fasting helped me to lose 35 pounds to go beyond that and do things that I didn't even think were possible, like reverse my asthma, my allergies, significantly improve my anxiety, um, and probably just bring down the inflammation that I had going on in my body in general that I wasn't even aware of. I just thought that was sort of how I always felt. And once you stop feeling like bloated and inflamed all the time, you'll be like, oh, it's like getting the windshield of your car cleaned, right? It's like, oh, it's not that dirty. It's fine. I can see. And then you go through the car wash and you're like, oh, <laughs> this is how it's supposed to be. So that's what I'm hoping to do here is just help you to get the benefits of fasting so you can see it, so you can experience it, you can get the pounds off. And then I don't want you to stop fasting. I want you to continue fasting, one, for maintenance, but two, because there are so many other health benefits that go along with intermittent fasting. Um, so, but I know you are here for the, the serious, get to the point, here's how to expedite my results. So I'm gonna give you the five best ones that I have. Number one is get your insulin down. That is the single biggest factor that makes a difference with intermittent fasting. And as compared to like, you know, calories in, calories out, right? Because if you're eating small meals throughout the day, your insulin is going to continue to stay high, which is a signal to your body to let nothing out of your fat cells, keep it locked away and keep adding more things in. That's like the primary role of insulin is to regulate fat storage. And so every time we eat, particularly if we are eating things that are sugary or high in carbohydrates, but even protein too, um, and fat to a certain degree, much less, but will spike our insulin. And so having nice long periods of time where you are having no sweetened beverages, even if they say zero calories, nothing that triggers that insulin response will make such a difference. Um, and that can vary for different people. There isn't necessarily one protocol that works best. I will at the end kind of give you a little bonus, which is the protocol that I think because of some things that it does with uh, converting white fat to brown fat and because it gives you a, a nice chunk of time with low insulin. One of the protocols that I think works best for losing weight with intermittent fasting, but it isn't one size fits all. There are a number of different things you can do, but the most important thing is you are getting real true periods of rest where you are not raising that insulin in any way, shape or form. I can't tell you how many people I've heard like say, oh, well, I was drinking this beverage, but it's okay, it says it's fasting approved. Or I was taking some fasting supplement that has high fructose corn syrup in it, but it says intermittent fasting on the bottle. So, so I thought it was okay. Like, no, just give yourself real true periods of rest where you are taking in nothing but water. If you really have to have it, a little bit of coffee or tea, but you will get the best results with water only letting that insulin fall. Second thing is, and it kind of goes online with this first point, is you want to be getting at least 18 hour fasting window each day. In the case of some people, if you're starting where you've done no intermittent fasting and you're just eating around the clock, then even a 12 hour fasting window might make a difference, right? You might start to see some pounds come off. Um, certainly some things pertaining to your circadian rhythm will improve. But if you're serious, and this is the video is serious about weight loss, you should be fasting for at least 18 hours every day, consistently at the same time as much as possible. That's gonna make a big difference, big difference. Um, and again, a glass of wine breaks your fast. A um, little bit of cream in your coffee, you will hear experts say it doesn't, but if you look at the literature, it's not as good 
as a true water only, or at least if you have to have coffee, coffee, but without anything added to it. Because each additional thing you layer on increases the likelihood that you are not getting your maximum benefits and your maximum weight loss as a result. So I'm just sharing with you the facts. You can throw tomatoes at the screen and be angry with me. I understand. I would feel the same way if I was listening to this because I'm like, you're going to pry this coffee from my cold, dead hands, right? But, um, but the research is pretty solid on this. And you will see some fasting experts say that, oh, caffeine helps increase the benefits of autophagy and things like that. I don't know where they're pulling that from. I can't find the literature yet that supports that. And oftentimes they have their own stake in it. So just, you know, choose your sources wisely. But that said, I did lose a lot of weight fasting while drinking coffee. So it is absolutely possible. It's just, if we're talking about getting maximum results, you wanna try to cut that. The third one is, and this one you're really gonna wanna throw stuff at me. I know. But I'm telling you the truth, cutting out all sugar and processed foods, they've got to go. So when I first started fasting, I couldn't do this. I was so addicted, particularly to sugar, but also just to a lot of junk food in general. And I just like, again, you can't pry it from my cold dead hands. But I started fasting and would notice while I was fasting, I felt really, really good. And then I would resume eating and I kind of felt shitty, probably because in addition to the insulin and stuff going on, really my inflammation was bothering me and I didn't realize that's what was going on. But I just knew when I was eating, I didn't feel very good. And when I fasted, I felt really good. And then over time, it led me to start cleaning up my diet. So even if you can't kick out all the sugar and processed foods right now, start stepping yourself down. Like those old school, you know, nicotine patch commercials, like take little steps in the right direction. So maybe it's cutting out sugar and replacing it with artificial sweetener temporarily, not forever. We don't want to be on artificial sweeteners for our gut health long-term, but as a short-term crutch to help break the dopamine cycle, the addiction factor that you might have for sweets, that could be a really good tool. So start to kind of take some of this stuff out of your, out of circulation, out of your repertoire of what you eat and definitely don't bring it into the house. Don't bring in sugar or processed foods to the house. Get it out. If you live with somebody else, a partner, a roommate, and they bring those kinds of things into the house, get them their own separate cabinet. Don't look at it. Ask them to keep it out of sight um, because that stuff is really addictive. And for many of us, it's hard to resist. Even now, if it's in front of me, I have a really hard time saying no. I love that stuff. And my my downfall is always, I'm like, oh, I'll just have one bite. I'll just have one little bite. And I never have one bite because I... I know uh, that it's it's gonna snowball, that I'm gonna want uh, well, one more little bite and one more little bite and pretty soon, uh-uh, it's all gone. So um, if you're like that, just know that. Don't bring that stuff into your space. That's the best, best thing you can do. Number four is the consistency of timing. You know, it's really interesting, but a lot of the research, um, particularly like from Dr. Panda and others, is increasingly showing that if you can keep your eating window as consistent as possible, your wake up time and your sleep time and your exercise time, I know I'm asking a lot, so definitely your eating time and then maybe some of those others, um, as consistent as possible, that will help you to get better results. Our bodies are creatures of habit. We like that kind of thing. And if you're staying up really late one night and waking up really early a different morning and you're constantly throwing your body out of whack, not only are you going to be more tempted to um, eat comfort foods, to stress eat, to emotionally eat, but you're also throwing the circadian rhythm of your body off. And that just makes it harder. It causes increased um, stress hormones. It makes it harder for us to lose weight. So the more consistent you can be in the timing, I mean, I literally set a bedtime alarm on my phone because naturally I am a night owl, but at 9 p.m. it goes off and I know by 10.30 I need to be in bed. And it just helps me to remember like, okay, this is coming. This is something I need to do. So 
Do you, you know, if you are serious about weight loss, set up systems that will help you to be successful. Don't just ride this one little wave of, oh yeah, I'm gonna go do this. Um, and then peter out, like really set yourself up for success. Think about what you need to put in place to get yourself consistent in your timing. And then my fifth tip for you is to monitor your progress. So I know for some people, scales can be triggering. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a scale. It could just be a piece of string that you put around your waist and you mark. Um, but find some way to hold yourself accountable to make sure that you know that you are trending in the right direction. And the reason this is really important is most likely, and, and this happened for me, so the first 15 pounds I lost came off really pretty easily. And I didn't have to do a lot. I just had to consistently fast, right? And they started to just kind of come off. And then after that, I stayed true. I stayed consistent in what I was doing and I lost no more weight because my body had figured that out. It was like onto me. And so I had to start changing it up. I had to change up my diet. I had to cut out sugar. Um, eventually I moved towards uh, keto and then more of a whole foods diet now, but I had to create that variety so that I could continue to lose more weight. So I really encourage you to have some way that feels good to you to monitor your progress and keep yourself accountable. Without that, it's really hard for us to know day to day how we're doing. And that said, there are natural fluctuations. If you're monitoring your weight on the scale, it is never gonna be a perfect smooth line. I wish it would be. Mine's not nobody I know, uh, nobody I work with is like that. So just give yourself some grace during that. Be compassionate with yourself when it can be challenging or when it can be disappointing and just stay the course. If you can be consistent, if you can keep doing these things and make sure that the trend line is generally headed the right way, you will be successful with this. All right, so my two bonus tips for you. Ready? Number one is kind of on that last point. So on plateaus, if for three weeks consecutively you are not seeing any change, like the scale's not moving down or you're noticing that you're just really not making any progress, then I encourage you to change something, whether it's your protocol, your exercise routine, the types of foods you're eating, clean them up a little bit maybe. Um, it may be shortening your, your eating window slightly or moving it earlier in the day can make a big difference, but just mix something up, something that feels doable, and then keep monitoring and make sure that you start to see that weight going down again. So that's really important because if you stay at a plateau and don't change things up and get discouraged, then you might be tempted to kind of abandon this. But like I said, our bodies are smart. They will figure this out and you gotta kind of stay, um, maybe not a step ahead of them, but you gotta react to what they're doing and modify your behavior accordingly. And then the second thing I will mention is, I think that alternate day fasting is the best protocol that you can use, at least initially, for weight loss. Now this can be too aggressive for some people in the beginning, and if this is too much for you, don't do it. Pick something that's more manageable, like an 18 hour fasting window every day, and just do that consistently, and you will still get great results. But if you're really serious about wanting to expedite your results, wanting to maximize how quickly you drop weight, definitely looking at something like alternate day fasting, or a 4-3 where you pick three non-consecutive days each week to fast, um, even two non-consecutive days, like like the 5-2 uh, type diet, um, I shouldn't say diet, <laughs> even uh, two days a week, like the 5-2 Michael Mosley style kind of fasting, that can make a big difference too. But really what it's about is giving your body periods where it has no food coming in, it can convert white fat to brown fat, it can, you get your insulin low enough that it lets your body use the fat that's already stored in your cells for fuel and give yourself a real rest. And then you resume eating so your body knows that it doesn't have to go into like lockdown starvation mode. There is plenty of food available. It's just you're not always having it. That I think is an incredibly powerful protocol and that's what I used to drop the first 15 pounds was just alternate day fasting. And at first, the first 15 days were straight alternate day fasting. And then after that, with my lifestyle, I realized 4-3 actually worked much better. So I started doing 4-3 fasting and that was incredibly powerful. And I did that for about, in total, about two months before my body started to plateau. So I lost about 15 pounds in two months 
and then my body started to figure it out and I had to start to get more creative in how to mix it up. So if you follow these tips, I promise you will get really amazing results. If you don't, tell me and I'll, I'll help you troubleshoot what's going on. But I, I know that these things make a huge difference in terms of getting you serious weight loss results. And I wish you great success. If it helps you, if you're the type of person that likes to have support and accountability and needs some motivation, or you have fasting questions, um, I encourage you to come check out our community and join us. I know for me, it really helps to have other people hold me accountable. I probably wouldn't fast half as much as I do if I didn't know I was gonna see my fasting friends every week and have to tell them, you know, report out on how I'd done the week prior, if I was actually meeting my goal or not, all that kind of good stuff. So I encourage you, come check us out. We're a friendly flock and I wish you great success in both your fasting and your weight loss journey. And until next time, happy fasting.